Matt, it's Ryan Rucco, David Cohn, Meredith Morakovic. How you doing this afternoon? Good. How are you guys doing? Doing well, Matt. Jordan Montgomery looked pretty sharp today. Those three innings of work. What stood out most to you about his outing this afternoon? I think the biggest thing is just getting him to attack mindset early and just going after guys with his fastball because that sets everything else up for him. So I thought he did a nice job with that. From Tommy John surgery, what are your expectations for Montgomery this year in the way of innings? Yeah, we're still kind of working through a lot of those plans. Uh, I think we feel pretty good about where Monty's at and the work he's put in and how he bounced back from last year. Um, so we haven't really set any limits on any of our guys, but we just figure we're going to kind of keep monitoring things and keep having conversations. It should be pretty fluid as we go. With Montgomery specifically, how different does his breaking stuff look to start the spring? It's, it's pretty consistent to what it was last year. I think there might be a little more action on the two seam and the change up. Um, we talked a little bit more about trying to get some top spin on the curveball and increase the depth a little bit. But overall, it's, they're in good spots and it's really about execution for him. It's a little bit of a different setup this year because of all the protocols. Have you found it difficult at all, Matt, shuttling back and forth between here and the minor league complex to watch the pitchers? You know, we were actually joking about that, Hark and I, earlier, because we're over at the minor league complex, which has a lot of new facilities, and we, we were saying we actually want to stay over there. we got a good setup, so Booney's <laughs> trying to drag us in and <laughs> get everybody together. We see him wave into the camera. Now, yeah. you mentioned some of those new facilities. The gas station was certainly a storyline early on this spring training. Can you just explain to some of the viewers exactly what has been going on inside that gas station? Yeah, so it's a new building they got over there. It's a lot of the same tools we've been using. It's just probably more efficient than what we had before, where there's a lot of uh, setup that needs to be happen and a lot of back end work that needs to happen after we capture you know, information, whether it's data or video. And the, the gas station does a nice job of creating a, a controlled environment that's automated with a lot of these tools. So it makes everything a lot easier. And, and the, the limitations on the staff we have, it actually sets up pretty well for this kind of environment. How do you balance using some of those new tools and not overwhelming guys with all of the tools? That's definitely the trick. The The biggest thing that we talk about, and it's, it's good that we have some guys who kind of came up before the tools were available. So they have like harnessed their game skills. And we're talking about Kluber and Britton and Cole and and they've kind of learned to adapt to those where we've got some of the younger guys who are more equipped to handle some of the tools but maybe don't have the game skills yet. So we're trying to marry those together as best as possible. And as much as we want to focus on, you know, spin rate and movement and things like that, at the end of the day, it's still about ex executing pitches over the plate. And that's uh, what we're trying to get to. Hey, Matt, you mentioned Zach Britton. A New York Post report by Dan Martin actually said that he contracted COVID back in January, lost a lot of weight because of it. How is he doing right now and how far back is he uh, in the spring training process as far as trying to get himself ready for the 2021 season? He's actually doing pretty well right now. Uh, he, he threw a bullpen today and he's, he's back on track. So I imagine he'll be facing hitters sometime this week. So he's actually, we just wanted to kind of make sure we were taking things you know easy with him and not forcing him back and making sure he was recovering properly. So we're just you know being cautious with our guys, know it's going to be a long year and there's going to be a lot of things we got to navigate so didn't need to rush him necessarily out of the gates. What do you do to navigate that because there's a lot of guys coming off of injuries then you have the 60 game season from a year ago how do you really make sure that you got, you're putting these guys in a position uh, to succeed not only early on but really for the entire season. Right and ultimately that's what we're trying to solve for is you know not April and not May not June I mean, we're looking for the end of the season and we got to win along the way so we want these guys to get in a good rhythm now and kind of establish some baselines of you know where they're at fitness wise from a strength standpoint, a range of motion standpoint, you know, what the, the stuff looks like coming out of their hands. And then I think set up some parameters for, you know, how the group as a whole, whether it's the front office, the medical staff, the SNC staff, the coaching staff, all get together with the player and kind of make sure we're having consistent communication with them on how things are trending for them and maybe adjusting plans along the way. But it's definitely going to be a, uh, a group effort to make sure we're, we're on the same page about anytime something's got to change from a, a schedule standpoint. Is it difficult to pull back the reins a little bit when you have guys like Corey Kluber and Jamison Tyone who's expected to have a big year in that rotation? Yeah, I think it is in one sense because these guys are really excited to get back out there. They've missed some time over the years, and they're in a good spot from a health standpoint, and they're, they're chomping at the bit. But they're also realistic about you know the environment we're entering into and how long the season is. And uh, the conversations we've had to this point, they all understand the, the things that are challenging this year you know, about moving forward in a 162-game season. So we haven't had too much you know issue yet. And obviously, it comes to the conversations going forward where it'll take some you know, really teamwork in that end. 
The rotation pretty much set as long as there are no injuries, of course. But when you look at that fifth spot, still up for debate, is there a leader in that race in your mind right now? Oh, gosh, yeah. Uh, we haven't got far enough into camp yet, but obviously, you know, Davey and Herman both look really good. Mike King looked good the other day. So, you know, I think we're going to have a lot of horses in the race, assuming we stay healthy. So that's a good problem. What goes into the decision-making process when it comes to that fifth starter? You know, I think there's some things just from a development standpoint that we want to make sure like Davey and Mike and Nelson and you know some of these guys kind of get to uh, obviously Herman having this 2019 performance you know he's established himself at the major league level so I think it's just trying to figure out what's the right thing for each guy in terms of the, the development they need and what the team needs and trying to balance that in terms of you know who has options who doesn't you know all that type of stuff but uh, we actually have some competitive names in the mix which is nice. When you look at Davey Garcia still a very young arm do you forget sometimes just how young he is by the way he is poised on the mound yeah that is uh you know when you think about a 21 year old and the way he carries himself out there it is really impressive you know just the, the game skills that he has for you know how young he is you know the ability to slow the game down to make big pitches to add and subtract uh, those are definitely advanced for uh, a guy that's 21 years old it's your second year as the pitching coach. What did you learn in year one, and what are you looking to change in year two? I think the biggest thing is just the, the group conversations that we maybe didn't get to last year from a COVID standpoint. I think we're really trying to bring the group together earlier and make sure everybody's on the same page about just a lot of the things we want to do from a systematic standpoint, but we're off and running. All right, Matt, thanks for the time. You are off the hook. Right. End of the inning. We will be back. Thanks so after much, guys. Break.